This is the original Prusa Mark III, and this is my review. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. Now, I know many of you have been waiting patiently for my review of this machine. But let's be honest, the launch of the Mark III wasn't exactly smooth. Announced in October last year, the original Prusa Mark III is the spiritual successor to the incredibly popular original Prusa Mark II, which I reviewed back in 2016. However, due to delays in the huge order volume and manufacturing issues, it meant that I wanted to take my sweet time in putting this video out. But now, I think it's as good a time as any. The Mark III looks visually similar, but is actually quite different to its predecessor. So I thought it'd be fun to actually run them through a little comparison. So although sporting the same i3 style frame, the Mark III finally does away with the threaded rod assembly method and uses aluminium extrusions. The print volume has been expanded slightly to 250 by 210 by 210 in the Z-axis and it uses a dual wheel Bontech extruder for high torque filament feeding. Like its predecessor, the Mark III sports a heated bed and automatic mesh bed leveling, which is uh, amazing to have and hard to go back to once you start getting used to it. But some of you may remember this. Luckily the PEI sheet does a great job sticking down parts, although for me at least, they did tend to stick down a bit too well and not self-release, so occasionally they do need a significant tap to pop free. My kingdom for a removable print surface. Well, it seems like the Prusa gods were listening, gifting us with this, the Mark 52 print surface with removable, flexible spring steel. Now, being able to flex prints off the bed between runs is awesome and has markedly improved my printing experience compared to hacking at prints with a spatula on other machines. This improvement alone has made me gravitate towards the Mark III over my other machines while printing my projects. Yes, I know there was issues getting the, the powder-coated PEI surface out, but more on that later. The rest of the improvements to the Mark III are less visually obvious, with the electronics being completely overhauled. It's now a 24 volt system and runs up to 128 micro-stepping with collision detection thanks to the Trinomatic motor drivers. And it has a new filament sensor which helps you warn you if there's a jam or a run out. The machine also has power panic which is during a power outage it will actually recover from where it left off, which did save me once during a blackout. It's one of those features that you don't know you need till you actually need it. And all of these electronic improvements have led to a significantly quieter 3D printer. The Mark II was loud, like even in silent mode, it was ridiculous. So I am very thankful for this. And they even put in a little uh, Noctua fan for the, the heat break cooling, which does that little extra bit of noise reduction. The Prusa team also finally did away with that horrible spool holder design with the two, two pieces, opting for a much, much uh, simpler large one piece design. It's okay, it's not bad, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, I actually don't like mounting spools to the top of i3 designs at all. I actually much prefer to print a separate holder and just mount it next to the machine or above it and have the filament feed in so there's no heavy mass on the frame. And the firmware for the Mark III is much improved over the Mark II. In fact, I've lost count how many times it's been revised since I've had this machine, but the interface remains unchanged. It's still the old school click wheel with the blue LCD. In my opinion, the RepRap aesthetic has possibly been pushed as far as it can. I would much prefer to see a nice little touch screen like we're seeing some other printer manufacturers moving to these days. As you're probably aware, the Mark III is available assembled or as a kit. And the kit is fairly straightforward to assemble, though if you've never put something electromechanical together before, you might struggle. It took me about nine hours over on the Makers Muse live channel across three streams at a very casual rate, I'll, I'll, I'll say. But I would, I would allow a full weekend, honestly. Machine itself can calibrate, but pay, pay careful attention to the belts, alignment, and gummy bear rationing. It's critical for successful builds. And the extruder design, in my opinion, is just a bit overcomplicated. It is simpler than the past, but I think it should just be way simplified for the sake of assembly. And just like the Mark II, you load G-code onto the Mark III with an SD card. Just like that, put your G-code onto it. 
and it does allow for Wi-Fi using Octoprint plugging in a Raspberry Pi, but from the factory, the Mark III does not come Wi-Fi capable, which is a bit of a shame. These days, I do like to see Wi-Fi in printers from the factory, and I think it would actually have added a lot of usability to an already smart machine. And for my test, I exclusively used the Prusa Slicer Edition, taking care to use the most recent version. So my prints were across various versions as I've had this machine, as were the firmware. I made sure I kept up to date because there was a lot of firmware and slicer revisions over the last few months. So what did I print on the Mark III? Well, I tested my new version tolerance gauge and I got down to the 0.15 clearances without too much difficulty, which was nice. And my kit produced one of the nicest maker coins I've ever printed in the elusive Prusa Mint PLA. But when it comes to challenging delicate models like the Lattice Torture Test, I have to say the results are somewhat disappointing. I'm not sure if it's retraction, nozzle design, or cooling, or the slicer, but cubes off both the Mark III and Mark II just don't look that great. They're a bit rough, particularly on the sides furthest away from the part cooling fan, although I know the, the cooling fan in the Mark III is improved. And um, there's a little bit of wispy stringing on, on these sort of prints off the Mark III, which is a little bit strange. I also threw my snowflake lattice torture test at the Mark III to see how it went, and it did fail in some areas, also struggling. But overall, it's, you know, this print is really difficult to, to do, and I'm being a little bit unfair here, but hey, it is a Prusa, and it has a pretty strong reputation. Lattice tests are hard, but some machines I have tested, like the Cetus, can print them without any issues at very high quality. For almost everything else though, the Mark III has been pumping out great looking prints. And again, can I stress just how good it is to have a removable print surface when you're doing product prototyping. The parts do have a bit of a unique surface finish to them on the sides, most noticeable along flat sides. I threw my ghosting test at the Mark III and all the ghosting is minimal, there's definitely a small texture there and I'm not exactly sure what's causing it. Maybe the drivers, maybe the linear bearings, honestly I don't really have a clue. And a lot of people printed my Easter egg torture test on their Mark III's and experienced a wobbly artifact on the outside surface. So I decided to have a go at it myself in Polyalchemy Elixir, which is a really reflective PLA filament. And yeah, I actually did get the same issue, the same artifacting at the 0.15mm slicer preset. My model is actually fused unfortunately, mostly down the bottom. Uh, I can't get it clear. And I did print this at 200% and it worked really well, but even at 200%, you can kind of see the same artifacting on the outside edges. Something I was keen to try on the Mark III was a semi-flex. Now printing semi-flexes on the Mark II extruder was possible, but very challenging. You had to print really slowly. But with the change to the Bond Tech, I was optimistic to print faster. But alas, I still have to slow things down quite significantly. Um, I was a little bit optimistic trying to print a torture test in, uh, in this is Fibrology's Fiberflex 40D. It got up not too far, not too bad actually, but then of course started to just fall over itself and all that rubbish. But slowing the speeds down and loosening some of the tension off on the Bontech, I did get these little parts done, which worked really nicely. Uh, a little bit of stringing, but that's to be expected with flexibles. I'm actually quite happy with this. So you can print flexibles or at least semi-flex on the Mark III if you slow your speeds down by at least half and uh, take care to make sure the Bond Tech isn't tightened up too much. The thing is though, as with most extruders with, with flexible filaments, it has a tendency to spill out the side, even printing slowly. And when this happened, it didn't trigger the filament detection because it was failing after the sensor. It's these kind of issues that really feed back into the general community feel of the Mark III. It's an incredible machine that was possibly released just, just a little bit too early, before all the bugs were ironed out. And I totally get it, scaling production can create unforeseen issues like they encountered with the PEI powder coated sheets, something no one had the balls to try before them. But like, the thing is, I do use the Mark III a lot more than my other machines currently because it's just so easy to run for day-to-day -day printing. Even though it does have those small quirks, the smarts, the removable print service, and the dependable quality make it perfect for design and prototyping like my recently released Relo triangle bearing. All of that is printed on the Mark III and it was really dependable for testing the model. And also keep in mind guys, these machines were like the first off the production line in case, in some cases they were like beta units. So the machine shipping now will have improved quality control and hardware to the bit of a mess up that these machines went through. I'm gonna take this chance to list off things I would have liked to see in the Mark III and that is Wi-Fi built in, not an option you can add. And considering the machine has now moved to extrusions, for the Y-axis, why not just make 
the move to rollers as well, like we've seen on other some other designs. High quality V rollers create incredibly rigid, smooth linear movement, and I think that the increased quietness of the Mark III over its predecessor could become even more pronounced if it had rollers instead of bearings for that axis. Similarly, a linear rail for the X would be really sexy, but I can definitely see that hiking the price a little, and I would love to see the interface replaced with a color touch screen. And although the Bontech is a big step forward to extrusion reliability, it does still struggle, like I mentioned, with flexible filaments. So far in 2018, we're seeing a trend at one end for manufacturers to release more grandiose, expensive machines, and at the other, to race to the bottom for cost. Prusa Research, however, has stayed true to their price point, and the kit price of $749 might seem high for an i3 kit, because it kind of is when you compare it to the cheap clones, but when you factor in all of its features over some of its competitors, it is actually pretty damn good value for a machine that you can depend on for everyday printing. And Joseph Prusa is definitely an incredible guy. I mean, I love the opportunity to finally meet him last year. He's put together a fantastic machine, but it can be tempting to buy into a company at almost a religious level. The Mark III, albeit massively improved over the Mark II, is still an FDM technology 3D printer with a 0.4 nozzle. It still takes spools of plastic and melts them out line by line into a physical object, and it will produce parts that look identical to other high quality i3 designs. But once all the bugs are ironed out with the smarts of this machine, it probably will be one of the best value printers for some time. So there you have it guys, my review of the Prusa Mark III. If you'd like to pick one of them up, I've put purchase links down in the video description. One is affiliate and one isn't. It's totally up to you to choose which one you'd like to go for. Here on Makers Muse, it is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And as with all reviews on the channel, no money has changed hands. The kit and the assembled machine were sent to me from Prusa Research free of charge in return for a review, which is purely my opinion. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, I'd love to have you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see what this 3D printer is capable of, check out my video of the Relo Triangle Bearing. I printed all the test parts on it and it actually worked really well, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.